Hello, everyone. If you just tuned in, welcome to ApacheCon Asia 2022's community track. This talk will take you through how to enable and foster open source collaboration with leading corporations listed on the stock market. But first, let me give you a very brief introduction about myself. My name is Yassine, and I am the head of international operations at SphereX, which is a big data and a database software startup. And when it comes to open source, I am a contributor and collaborator with the Apache Shalini Sphere community, uh, which is an open source project hosted by the Apache Software Foundation since about six years. And if you'd like to know more about it, well, it's a project that allows you to transform any database into a distributed database and also enhance it with a multitude of features, including data encryption, um, um, SQL, Hello everyone, and welcome to ApacheCon Asia 2022's community track. Hello everyone. If you just tuned in, welcome to ApacheCon Asia 2022's community track. This talk will take you through how to enable and foster open source collaboration with leading corporations listed on the stock market. But for, first, before starting, let me give you a very brief introduction about myself. My name is Yassine, and I am the head of international operations at SphereX, which is a big data startup. And when it comes to open source, I am a contributor and community collaborator at Apache Shalini Spheres, where I assist the community by expanding the project internationally and helping them and helping the community gain more contributors and more enterprise collaboration possibilities. If you're not familiar with Apache Sharding Sphere, well, all you need to know is that it's a project, it's a very large project that allows you to transform any database into a distributed database, but also enhance it with additional features very easily. And these features include everything from data encryption to distributed transactions and more. Um, if you'd like to know more about the project or collaborate or use it, feel free to check out uh, the link tree, uh, link that you can see on the bottom left of, of the screen currently. And if you'd like to find this link, you can find it on any uh, on any of the Apache Sharding Sphere community digital channels. When it comes to me, you can find me on all the major platforms such as LinkedIn and Twitter, but also GitHub. So to get started, I'd like to first give you a bird's eye view of this, uh, of this talk today. Uh, we will mainly talk about community, and we will divide uh, this topic into three main parts. The first one being key values, followed by the assets, and then as a last but not least, persistence. Um, as a side note, you should know that this talk is based on both uh, research, so information that you can freely find available on the internet or books, etc., and also on personal practical experience that I have gathered over the past couple of years. Um, working both with open source technology, uh, but also enterprise technology in general throughout my career. Um, so <clears throat> we will first talk about the three main community values, and uh, but you should keep in mind that these are diverse paradigms that depend and change according to the community that we are considering. So first of all, before getting really into how to get uh, enterprise collaboration opportunities, the single most important aspect that you should be thinking about that you should understand before even getting started is why enterprises love open source and uh, how they use it. Why do you need to care about these two points? Because you should know your target market. For anything that you do, you should know who is your target market, who is your target audience. Um, so if you can understand why they are interested in what you have to offer, in what you will be potentially offering, then you can better uh, serve both them and your community. So, 
The first reason why open enterprises love open source is that open source actually unleashes creativity. Uh, the business businesses have found that um, there are shared benefits uh, that can be gained from open source. Open source is a pro open sourcing a project can speed up development and problem solving, but also highlight potential issues and blind spots that if a company didn't open source the project, wouldn't be aware of. Also, open source proves the power of diversity and inclusion, right? Nowadays, open source communities are truly global. And uh, this allows for a team working on a single feature or a single software uh, to have uh, diverse point of views. And uh, bringing people from open source to work on a project allows you to solve issues and to receive contributions that you may have not even thought of before. This is from an enterprise perspective. And always from an enterprise perspective, open source actually does reveal the true value of a project. Um, it can be difficult for individuals or companies to determine what is the real worth uh, of a project if it's kept in isolation. Uh, moreover, open source allows companies to serve customers better uh, when tools are developed cooperatively in tandem. This increases efficiency, and, but also challenges open source uh, enterprises to rethink work because overall quality of code improves and problems are solved in a faster manner and more efficiently and ultimately user lives are made easier thanks to this, because technologies can become more reliable, more efficient, and more scalable thanks to open source. I put this quote here from uh, a VP of IBM because, as he says, the more you get involved into open source, with open source, the more you're part of driving the foundation of a key technology um, by participating directly in, in the community, in the committees, and taking part on sponsor with sponsorship opportunities. Uh, this allows for a company to get their standard, to be widely adopted, et cetera, et cetera. Always talking about open source and enterprises. It is possible to notice that organizations that use open source or contribute and or contribute to open source understand that uh, open source is a strategic enabler that actually helps them achieve business goals. Now, it wasn't always like this. The perception from enterprises had, wasn't always this positive towards open source, but this has been changing quite a lot and uh, quite frankly, pretty quickly over the past few years. Um, so this is because only organizations that take the extra step of actually joining open source communities and exchanging ideas with open source uh, can actually have found out that they, they can actually unlock the full business value uh, of their of their open source strategy. So they are getting more involved to be able to obtain more results from open source. So which benefits both ways, both the open source community and the enterprises. Um, because as you can see, uh, I mentioned here from this code, Open source has many advantages, and one of them, because if you should not forget that we are talking about enterprises which are profit driven, right? So one of the biggest advantages that enterprises see in open source is cost, cost reduction, and flexibility. So if enterprises are able to reduce cost and gain flexibility, then they have a very strong incentive to not only use open source, but to participate in open source and exchange with the open source communities. Uh, some examples of cost reduction and flexibility include no vendor lock-in, for example, no, no dependence on an OEM specific firmware version, etc. So how would you go forward and build and your, your open source community in order to maximize your collaboration possibilities with enterprises. You should start from the contributors. They are the core of any open source community and they are the cornerstone of everything you do and every, every single community out there. 
So you should uh, foster a feeling of belonging among the community, and but you should not forget uh, three main things. So when, one main thing, actually, you should never forget what value does your project bring to users. So if you are able to understand what value does your project bring to an enterprise, for example, then you will be able to better move forward, better align your, your objectives, better draft the roadmap, and ultimately attract the most appropriate contri community contributors to your project. Because don't forget, if community contributors come to your project and then they start contributing, but then they do not see that they are building something that is useful, then they will lose that drive, that 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 feeling of accomplishment that they would get by having by seeing an enterprise applying or using uh, an open source project that they contribute to into a production environment. So you should really care about what value does your project bring. And this will allow you to actually have a long-term orientation because if you continuously sit down and analyze what it value is my project or our project bringing to users and then understanding that this value changes over time, you will be able to plan and work with a long-term vision. I've put here uh, an example of the Apache Attic because actually if you consider that how many projects are in the Apache Software Foundation currently, you should not forget that there have been many more other projects that have been since put into the Attic. They have been retired. Uh, one example is Apache Ibatis, um, which uh, has been simply discontinued and the community is dead because it had no real useful application uh, for, for users. So <clears throat> do not forget that open source uh, software and other collaborative projects exist and benefit and uh, exist because of community. Community is the number one factor that makes uh, an open source project not only survive, but also thrive. So this is because unlike traditional projects, open source projects, open source projects are um, require, that require physical resources, open source projects are more similar to sharing economies. And sharing economies are generally only hindered by the number of people that are actually contributing and putting an, an effort uh, into this uh, sharing economy uh, by sharing their ability to acquire and share knowledge. So as long as people contribute, as long as people are willing to dedicate their time and effort to the sharing economy, then this economy can thrive. The same thing applies for open source. So I am an economics uh, student. I I did a lot of research when it comes to sharing economy and uh, innovation technology during my uh, doctorate. And uh, time and again, time and again, uh, we have seen that sharing economies only are only as good as the willingness of the participants to uh, be involved and dedicate their time and resources. So going back to Apache Shalini Spear, as I mentioned earlier, Apache Shalini Spear is a very large project. It is an ecosystem, actually. And it allows you to transform any database uh, into a distributed database system. And then add on top of that uh, multiple mm, useful features, such as data sharding, elastic scaling, data encryption, distributed transaction, and et cetera. It's a community that is relatively young if compared to other Apache projects. Um, it has be now become a top level Apache project. Uh, it has been incorporated into the Cloud Native Computing Foundation landscape and has received numerous accolades uh, during its uh, relatively short existence. Although the project originated from China, uh, and it is, it is the most active Chinese-led Apache project of the year as of 2022. 
the project is now expanding overseas, and this is where I come in. I come in. I am helping the community expand overseas. Uh, SphereX is a, co a company that had, was founded by some of the core contributors of uh, the Apache Sharding Sphere project, which goes to prove uh, how uh, actually successful open source projects and communities that do not lose sight of the value that they can bring to their users can successfully be converted into a business. So, and SphereX, the company that I work for, is a clear testament of that. So, when it comes to your assets uh, that you should consider and make sure that are strong and solid uh, in order to succeed in your corporate cooperation opportunities with enterprises, you have your, infra your infrastructure, your code, your testing environment, and your workflow and rules. So, generally, most projects use GitHub for this. Uh, it's a tool, it's a great tool to kickstart your project. And uh, actually, if, if you start your project, one thing that I would like to recommend is to really care about the programming language that you will be using. Because if you start to code with uh, your programming language in a language such as Ruby or PHP, for example, I put here, some statistics of the most in-demand programming languages of 2022. As you can see, Ruby, Perl, PHP are at the bottom. So if you choose a language that is not widely adopted, widely used, you're essentially limiting your reach. You're, you're putting yourself into a small box. So what you would want to do is find a project, is to find a programming language that will be uh, widely adopted so that it is easier for people to use your project, which in turn increases your uh, possibilities of uh, being um, included with uh, collaborating with an enterprise. So this goes to uh, under the infrastructure uh, section of the assets because it is an essential part of your community that it will be very difficult to change once you make the choice. If you start developing your project in uh, TypeScript, for example, changing everything to another language will be very difficult to do down the road. So think about it very carefully when you make the decision. Another aspect that is often overlooked, always considering the assets of uh, your community, and that is documentation. It is, uh, I don't know how many times I have said this, uh, but I keep saying it again and again, documentation should not be an afterthought of your project because the earlier you start putting care into your documentation, the easier it will be down the road for you to deal with it and for newcomers to understand your project get on board it quickly, and also for enterprises to consider using your project. The better your documentation, the higher the chances for an enterprise to uh, start using the, your project. This is extremely fundamental uh, because it paves the road for others to understand your community, your project, how to use your software, and everything uh, comes from there. So you're not only creating a path for potential contributors to join you, but also a path for potential users to start uh, using your software. Once you have your documentation um, set up and uh, solid, you should not forget to clarify and share with the world uh, to be sure that you are following all the best practices practices to share with the world your milestones and plan and future roadmap so that everybody knows where the community is headed, where is the software headed, et cetera. And then once you have that figured out, you can do a lot of contributions to uh, get your project known outside of your community. So you start to write articles for user cases, uh, installation guides, and this kind of thing and spread them throughout third-party blogs or your own blog. I put here uh, some examples of uh, Apache Sharding Sphere. 
because we have been recently really focusing on this aspect and we i have to say that it has improved our project's visibility quite a lot and also increased the number of new contributors that we see coming into the project and also maximized our chances to be considered by enterprises as we are getting more and more enterprises that uh, notice us and start to use the Apache Sharding Sphere ecosystem. One more thing that uh, we should talk about when it comes to community are the participants. So the participants are essential. Uh, you have both uh, inside participants and outside participants To So if we are talking about inside, this is for the people that are already somehow part of your community and you should give them a true feeling of belonging. You should make them feel at home. You should foster a warm and welcoming community that promotes an exchange of ideas and innovation. And I put here the Apache way because I think uh, it's one of the best, if not the best code of conduct that I've seen uh, across communities. Um, some of the staples that we all know are community over code earned authority and open communication. You can see how these three values already promote a feeling of a positive feeling towards Apache uh, Software Foundation hosted communities and how it's easily accessible for everyone to see uh, these values. So they are open and put out in the open in the world for everyone to see, which is very transparent and this helps a lot. When it comes to the outside, you want to focus on how to attract new participants to our community. You have various channels. Uh, this is something that I focus on uh, in my role as a community builder at the Apache Software Foundation. And um, uh, from experience, I can say that uh, you have multiple channels and tools available at your disposal. The ones are, that I recommend are social media, uh, such as Twitter, to get your ideas out there, to have people hear about you, and also long form articles uh, where you write longer pieces that introduce your product, your, your software, your capabilities, etc., and to be published on uh, third party blogs. Uh, or your own platform, uh, your own blog platforms, such as your own website or medium. When it comes to third party blogs, after you get some traction on social media, you can start to reach out to uh, some third party publications that specialize in technology. You can offer uh, or request them to publish your content. And this will allow you to expand your reach and for more people to see what you are working on, what your community does, and how your solution can be useful, right? So once you do this, you will be attracting people. But when you attract them, where do, do you take them? Um, we, I spoke previously about GitHub, but GitHub is a little impersonal, so that is definitely not enough. I recommend setting up a Slack channel or a Discord channel, for example, or I know a lot of people also in China, for example, prefer to use WeChat, group chats, and this and this kind of platform. But the idea is the same. You, you need to have somewhere where people can go to land. Once you attract them on social from social media and third-party publications, you need to bring them somewhere. And then once they're there, you need to build this community on the Slack channel or Discord channel, uh, Discord server or WeChat group uh, by making you know, meetups and uh, allowing people to get help or with their issues with the software, et cetera, et cetera. So um, once you start to do this with the time, you will see that the opportunities will start to multiply exponentially. So the more you put yourself out there, the more chances you will get to be better known as a project and as a community. I put here a, an Amazon screenshot because 
our community actually just wrote a book called A Definitive Guide to Apache Sharding Sphere, where we introduce our project. And this book is written in collaboration with uh, this book will, would allow us to introduce our project and community uh, to a more diverse, uh, more diverse audience that includes uh, enterprise uh, enterprises and DBAs working uh, in multinationals. And so this would allow us to target a more professional audience that would use Sharding Sphere in a, in a production environment. So I put this book here not so much for self-promotion of our book, but to uh, as a testament, as a demonstration of the fact that the more you put yourself out there, the more you will get uh, chances to uh, expand your community's visibility and reach. And, and I say that because we did not contact the publisher for this book. It was the publisher that noticed our community's uh, uh, community development efforts and reached out to us to offer this partnership. So um, as I was mentioning earlier, um, do not forget to focus on social media by also sharing the good news with everybody uh, and also the community, for example, on Twitter, by writing uh, long form contributions to be published on third party um, websites such as InfoQ, and also by fostering a sense of community by sharing within the Slack channels and the and the, uh, GitHub, whatever you're working on. And the partnerships will follow. Uh, as you can see here, I have included a few different logos of uh, some very famous companies. I am pretty sure that uh, you, for, you will surely recognize some of these logos. Uh, most of them are from China, but uh, some of these companies operate internationally, so I am sure that also the international audience would be able to recognize some of the logos, such as Oppo, Vivo, the two smartphone manufacturers, or higher, the uh, uh, domestic appliances manufacturer, or TCL, the, the famous television manufacturer. And then you also have uh, some companies such as Bilibili, which is um, the Netflix of China, kind of, uh, and also other companies such as uh, yeah, ITE, which is uh, also similar to the Netflix and YouTube of China, uh, plus other ones. The reason why I put these companies here is that um, these companies all are listed on the stock exchange, some of them on the on international stock exchanges, some of them on national stock exchanges, and they all use Apache Sharding Sphere in their production environment. Um, as an example, uh, I included here Keep, IT, and Tindom, or JD.com. So Keep is a mobile fitness app that allows users uh, to view fitness videos and uh, to buy fitness equipment directly on the app. It currently uh, has well over 200 million users and it's pretty active and it's still growing. While IT is also known as the Netflix of China uh, and is one of the largest online video sites in the world with uh, over uh, 6 billion hours spent uh, on, its, uh, on its service each month by over 500 million monthly active users. So these are impressive numbers that can make you give you an idea of the stress that uh, such numbers put on their existing database infrastructure. And this is why they, they started to use Sharding Sphere. Uh, the third example is China's largest retailer and the world's third largest internet company, JD.com, that started as an e-commerce company but has since expanded into fintech, logistics, and uh, even entertainment. So it is a very large company, uh, which has among other things over 190,000 corporate cost customers for its logistics business. So you can imagine the number of uh, the, the, the kind of database infrastructure that it is needed to support such a large business and how uh, the, the requirements and the demands they have are so high for, when it comes to getting the best out of their software. 
So these companies all use sharding sphere and the key in collaborating with these companies that they make your community and solution better. Once you put yourself out there and make sure that you have strong, solid community foundations by making, um, uh, by sharing with your community a very strong documentation, uh, having a strong infrastructure in code, choosing choosing the appropriate coding language, and then start to promote your software, your solution, and your community on social media and on third party uh, uh, third party media, you will be noticed, you will attract more people. And some of these people that you attract work in this type of company that I'm showing here. They probably contribute to open source in their spare time, or they're maybe doing some research for a need that has emerged within their professional business and they're looking for an open source solution, an open source alternative, and they may stumble upon your community and they may give it a try. The way it usually works is that they give it a try and then they start to test it. And then if they like it and they see that the performance is satisfactory, the relationship between the community and the enterprise business can get deeper and grow where to the point where the business will start contributing code to the community and also providing input on future directions and uh, maybe sometimes some requirement such as oh we'd love to have this or that feature it would be great if you could support this or that database uh, because it emerged that from our existing infrastructure we have this issue and it would be great if Shining Sphere could be able to support it and so you would develop a collaborative relationship and actually the more uh, after you get the first one or two enterprises to collaborate with you then it's all downhill from it from there it's easy it's easier because do not forget about word of mouth and you will also receive a stamp a seal of approval that you will be able to uh, share across the community saying that this software this solution is used already in a production environment so it has been tested and proven to be useful and efficient and so more enterprises will be willing to give it a try the last but not least is persistence. Uh, this is the last but not least point that I would like to recommend to you if you're looking to give your community more chances to collaborate with enterprises is that you should be persistent. Like many other things in life, you should not give up at the first adversity. You should not give up if results are not coming immediately. You should instead adapt your way of doing things, what you offer, listen to feedback and continuously improve. As you can see here, there are, there are a lot of Apache projects um, that have been retired. And uh, there are many new projects that come into the Apache Software Foundation, but there are also many new projects that are retired, retired committees. So some of those projects maybe reach truly reach the end of the line where they have been replaced by a, by a better technology but some of those projects maybe were not persistent enough were not trying uh, as hard and as intelligently as they should have uh, while on the other hand uh, not to boast but uh, the apache shawardin sphere community we try to continuously adapt, which is definitely something I would recommend you. And as it, as you can see from our GitHub stars graph, we are on the way up and I hope that we will continue to be going into this positive and growing direction for the future. So that would be all for this session. If you'd like to know more, feel free to connect with me on any social media such as LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, or GitHub. Or if you'd like to know more about Sharding Sphere or SphereX, uh, feel free uh, to reach out 
and connect with us on Twitter, LinkedIn, or Slack for Chardonnay Spear. And if you're looking for a company that uh, loves open source and uh, contributes to open source actively, check out SpearX. We are hiring for brilliant people. Uh, always hiring, always looking for uh, like-minded, brilliant people. So who knows? Thank you for listening today. I hope you have a great rest of the conference and um, that you enjoy the, this year's edition of ApacheCon. Thank you.